All right, it's episode 26 of the Football Pod with Paddy and Andy. How are things, lads? Andy Moore and you've had a busy couple of days. Yeah, last week was um, was mad between between everything, between uh, getting up and running with Leitrim and the book launch on Thursday night. It's been it's been nuts, but uh, yeah, it was, it was a good couple of days. Thanks for coming down, Tommy. Really appreciate it. Tommy was MC for the night, Paddy, so it went well and um, yeah, really enjoyable couple of days. You missed a good night, Paddy. It looked good. <laughs> I it it have suited you, Paddy. It have suited you. I think, yeah, yeah. I would have, you wouldn't have got rid of me. I'd have been there probably <laughs> Saturday or Sunday. I'd have a bit of college stuff. We'd be that. still in McBurn with you, Pat. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then I, when I was seen, uh, I was following it on Twitter, obviously, I seen the full Mayo crowd. I've been, I would have been a fish out of water in there. Like, <laughs> but, uh, but I heard it went very well, which was great. Uh, so delighted it feels anyway. So. Yeah, it was brilliant. Well done, Andy. Yeah, very good. Very good night all around. And, uh, Jesus, some great stories were told. Um, Tom Parsons' speech, Paddy. You had to, it was one of those things. There's no footage of it. There's no recording. You had to be there to experience it. It was unbelievable. Um, a lot of stories that aren't actually in the book, Andy. Yeah, uh, those better storytellers than me, I think, on the stage <laughs> on the night. Uh, but uh, Parsons was was exceptional. I never seen. It was nearly like a TED talk at a <laughs> at a book launch. So it was a just TED amazing. talk. A TED talk mixed with Tommy Tiernan is how yeah. I would say. It. He's, yeah. he's had a busy couple of weeks, so it was um, nice from there to let his hair down. Yeah, uh, amongst friends, that would be fair to him. Yeah, so it was unbelievable. And then uh, guest exper- uh, uh, appearance from Michael Conroy, who was in the crowd, and, and a few bits and pieces like that. So no, it was good. It was good fun and uh, went really well. So I'm just delighted and. Uh, it's nice that that's done and we can just kind of move on with it now yeah it's been a it's been a busy couple of weeks and the club championship lads has not slowed down at all i don't know if you spotted niall McNamee's goal the footage of it but road are trailing by three points long ball goes into the square he grabs a hold of it nails a lot of shoulder bounces him the other way and he buries it with his left foot I feel, so, I feel so sorry for the lad that came in just did the right thing, came in, and McNamee just gets him, gets him on his momentum, Paddy, when he's just turned, yeah. and he literally turns him onto his left leg, and he buries it in the bottom corner. But it's the, what I loved about it was the crossfield ball wasn't great. You can see McNamee at the back post calling for the back crossfield ball. It wasn't great. It dropped a bit short. But the instincts of a, of a poacher, of a finisher, we've talked about these goal scorers, yeah, yeah. yeah. And he just attacks it, catches it on the half bounce. Unbelievable. And we keep saying it, Paddy, we've said it a million times in the pod. The first touch of a real good inside yeah. forward. Everyone will talk about the finish and the goal, but the first touch is absolutely... Particularly at club level, where there's a little bit more time, but in these conditions as well, it's wet, it's windy. November time now, and that little bit of class has saved them, really. I, I was surprised. Mm. They expected the road to come through that, so for them all to be kicking themselves, but that's just composure, a bit of class, and... Our guest today, he's still doing it as well. Oh yeah, the weekend. So it's some going, some mileage on the on the clocks. But that that touch and that class never leaves mm. you. Really. Our special guest this week on the football pod is Kieran Donaghy. So I'm really excited to have Kieran on the show. They had a sensational win at the weekend, Austin Stacks. The Betty's Kerry, who were chasing their third Kerry championship in a row. What did um, they, What did they do today with Clifford? Huh? We'll have what to happened? ask the man himself. What, we'll have to ask what the are man they himself. doing? Yeah, they're, looking, they're, they're giving out that he gets rough treatment when he's playing with Kerry, but it's obviously a different kettle of fish when it comes to the club championship. Like oh. Jack O'Connor, he, he has to spill the beans. Jack O'Connor, the happiest man in the in the country, <laughs> David Clifford off now for about six weeks. Nice rest into the into twenty twenty two. Oh, yeah. he's with you, Tommy. That's for sure. Yeah, he could be. Yeah, I'll let you know. I'm uh, I'm off my holidays tomorrow, so if there's no football pod next week, you can blame me. We'll see. Now I'm going to do. We'll record an episode. We I won't let you down. It's a joke, Penny. Uh, I know. Um, so Kerry, right? It's the first round of the Kerry Club Championship. There's no back door this year because of the condensed calendar. Tommy Walsh, who retired there last week, starred for Karen Zarahali. James O'Donoghue, who's Clarny Legion, won a penalties. And then Austin Stacks obviously knocked out East Kerry. So we'd have a, a word with Kieran about some of those games at the weekend. In Roscommon, we saw Padraig T- Pierce's won a, win another uh, senior Roscommon title. I think that's two in three years. In Galway, the reigning champions, Moy Cullen, were knocked out. Cara Finn are now back in the final. And they're playing my uh, Bellew, my lock in the final. That's a that's a game that we've seen plenty of times over the last couple of years. Um, I'm just going to read out what the what the Carfin subs were in the semi final. Um, Phelan McEnumber, a, a listener of the football pod, texted me yesterday and he said Michael Farrer, former Galway senior, Matthew Cooley, corner forward on the All Ireland under twenty one and under twenty winning team, Tony Gill, centre back on the All Ireland under twenty winning team, and Ian Burke, 
an all-star from two years ago. Like, that's a pretty decent bench to be bringing in in a semi-final in the club championship. So um, that'll be a cracking game between Mount Bellew. What else do we have? We had Tyrone lads. So this game wasn't on TV, but Cole Island yesterday had a sensational comeback against oh. Erica Kieron. They were, I think they were seven points down. There was 10 minutes to go. They hadn't yet scored from play. They get a, they get a dodgy goal, right, in the, in the 52nd minute. Yeah. Then they get a penalty in the 55th minute, right? So they got two goals. They still haven't scored from play. And then they score a goal. I think it's a, a shot from about 20 yards that goes into the top corner. And uh, so they end up going a point up. Eric Kieran now have had Dara Canavan playing really well all day. Um, at this stage, Cole Island have a man sent off, Michael McKiernan. So himself and Canavan were clashing. There's photos of the two of them scuffing <laughs> a few times and laughing a few yeah, minutes later. Out the window there. Yeah, so Dara Canavan, for one, is, is flying. Rory Canavan is another fella who's come off the bench, a younger brother. I think he's only 17. And uh, he's scored a couple of points. He's scored a couple of sensational points in the second half. So anyways, Eric Kieran, seven points up, they're now a point down. Doesn't their goalkeeper just go, Darren McElhenney, and score from play? He equalises it. Cole Island go down and get a dodgy free. They score and go point up. And Peter Hart misses the last chance at the very end to bring it to extra time. So Cole Island are in the final. But the biggest thing, one of my favourite parts in the weekend this weekend, was Dramore and Trillick. Two clubs very close to each other. I don't know if you saw this, lads, but Jared Canning had a bit of trouble on commentary. <laughs> so, There's about 15 McNabb's playing, to be fair to It's him. hard now. Follow this, the throne, lads. There's a lot of Max there. Like, it's, this, this is the trouble, have your right? You to commentate on them, like. So I, I, I'm, I've got a couple of notes here just because so, I don't mess this up, right? So there's two McNabs for more, neither related, both on the half forward line. They created utter confusion for this game. Both of them got a heap of touches and Jer's only differentiation between them was their nickname. One was Magpie McNabb and the other was <laughs> Lizard McNabb, which oh, meant geez. absolutely yeah. nothing to everybody at home. Jer later throws in, right, that one of the Rona McNabs was actually bestowed the moniker Junior. So after listening back a few times to the game last night, I was actually listening to this game about midnight last night. I figured out that it turns out that Lizard, Mc, Lizard McNabb, Ronan Lizard McNabb played county football. So he's the Ronan McNabb that we all know. And yeah. Ronan Magpie McNabb is the younger of the two. So his real name is Ronan Magpie McNabb Jr. So it's worth noting that both of these lads had fine games. Ronan Lizard McNabb made a savage block late on, 59 minute clock about to hit the red. And to make it even better, Sean McNabb, or Stickman as he's known, had a savage influence in the game. And another McNabb, Emmett, was the star of the show. He kicked five points. So you had Sean Stickman McNabb at number 10. You had Ronan McNabb Magpie Jr., number 11. You had Ronan Lizard McNabb, number 12. And Emmett McNabb, star of the show, number 13. I have no idea, lads, if any of the McNabs are related. But there you go. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give Jared the benefit of the doubt there. That, that's tough going now. Live commentary with... Four magpies, three lizards, and one stick man. <laughs> All you need is the wolf. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Wolf McLeod as well, yeah. thrown in at number 14. Oh, brilliant. Oh, uh, it. I'm giving Jared a benefit of the doubt there. That is, that's a hard gig. I have yeah. to say. And it was a quality game as well. It was well worth watching back. It was a quality game of football. So, yeah, the club championship, lads, you can't beat it, and it's flying. I think it's time for us to get our special guest on. Unless there's anything else you want to throw into the mix. Well, he's the, the star of the club chapter from the weekend by the sounds of it. Yeah. Looking at match reports. So. Brilliant. Okay. Right. Stay with us. It's episode 26 of the Football Pod of Paddy and Andy. We're about to take a, a 15 second ad break. So hit subscribe if you haven't already and share the pod if you enjoy it. Kieran Donaghy is joining us next. All right. I am delighted to welcome Kieran Donaghy to the Football Pod of Paddy and Andy. Kieran, what a weekend you've just had, right? Six, a record 60th championship appearance for the Austin Sachs Club. We'll come back to that in a minute, but you've broken Jero Keefe's record that stood since 1992. That must mean an awful lot. A week after winning the, the club, the county championship, you've now gone and in the first round of the club championship. You've knocked out East Kerry, the reigning champions who are going for three in a row. So we'll come back to your role in that in a minute. I hear you missed a big goal chance, but you also finished full back and you kicked <laughs> the point. And then the next day, you end up back in the court for the Tralee Garvey Warriors. You're back playing, yeah. your, back playing basketball as well. And last night, I noticed that you end up, ended up in a boot trying to recover after the weekend. How is the body after all of that? It's, it's, broke, it's broke up. And I think you're after confusing all of the people in Ireland who are already very confused by the club and the county championship. <laughs> so we, won the, we won the club championship a few weeks ago and we knocked out these carry in, in the county championship uh, on Saturday. Um, they were great champions in fairness for two years. And they lost the spa club, which would have been, you know, four or five, Darren Mine and a few more of those fellas. 
Um, so they were probably, you know, uh, the big thing with the with the division sides down here, kind of early, um, before they get that kind of head of head of steam and the momentum and the understanding that comes with, obviously, the advantage the clubs have is that kind of continuity and understanding around tactics. Whereas these are guys that are brought in from different clubs probably two or three weeks ago, uh, uh, and and tried to get it ready uh, the last day, but. We had, a, we had a very good first half. Yes, I missed an absolute sitter. Um, did all the hard work. Brendan Keeley, my old... I probably went through one-on-one -on -one too many times with him in training. He'd be fairly well pegged. Uh, so he made me go around and he made me use my left leg and I threw the left of it and hit the post. Uh, it was one of those ones that probably be getting highlighted on match of the day from Miss of the Week. <laughs> um, and yeah, we, 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 were, we actually played really well in the first half, kind of spearheaded by, by our defence. Uh, they gave us a good platform to score and, and we didn't do a good enough job at that. Um, we only went in 5-2 up when it probably could have been 2-6 or 2-7 to, to two points, which would have obviously given us a lot of breathing space. I might have been able to go to full back right after half time, but uh, it was Joe Connor, the, the Kerry panellist, who's, who's been outstanding for us in the club championship. The club championship. He got a big goal for a quarter and that kind of gave us the platform, I suppose, to try and hold on to it, but um, it was it was a tough battle and tough conditions. But um, yeah, a great way to grind it out for us uh, on Saturday. Yeah, you, you mentioned how so East Kerry are chasing three in a row, and um, I hadn't realised that it was Darren Moynihan and, and the Spa Club they had lost, but they still have young Paul O'Shea who's breaking through, and the two Clifford brothers, Paddy and David. So like, it was a big task first round of the club championship. It was, yeah. Look, they were they were massive favourites to, to 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 do the three in a row, which, which comes with its own pressure. But you know, they, they lost this ball, but they got in coming, like you said, like Paul O'Shea got an unbelievable goal, um, a crazy goal, really, uh, into the top corner off the stanchion, and um, they had Kevin McCarthy as well, who was on the Kerry panel there for a while. And yeah, look, they're 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 a really good team, but. As I said, our backs kind of, you know, the two guys in particular, Dylan Casey and Jack O'Shea, who probably putting their hand up to, to Jack O'Connor and his management team were 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 really good. Um Mark and Mark and Dylan was on on David and did quite well, even though David was starved of position in the first half into the breeze. Um but Jack O'Shea really put Paddy uh on, on the back foot and you know, scored two points himself and, and could have had a third. He was very unlucky at the post. Um, so, he, you know, he had, they, they gave us a great platform. Uh, and I suppose even at half time when we knew we'd left a lot behind us, our backs were doing so well that we had confidence in them to, to kind of carry out the job in the second half. So, yeah, look, it was a good battle. In fairness, they showed great courage uh, to come back because we were, we were looking comfortable um, and they chipped away. They got a point or two. Uh, Paddy got a lovely 45 and then as I said Paul O'Shea got that, that cracker of a goal and all of a sudden it was a two-point game and we were hanging on a bit but um, uh, it was a good win for us because yeah, yeah. you know our manager our manager was, was sick all week so he wasn't around the group and um, it, 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 he's worked so hard with this team over the last few years that it, it was it was a nice one to, to see Wayne um, get his win even not being there with us on the day Yeah, well done Karen. and um such a quick turnaround. Like, you're, it's South Kerry you have now in the, qu the quarter final next weekend. Uh, yeah, yeah, South Kerry next week. Yeah, so they scored 217 against Field Rangers the weekend, uh, who'll be in North Kerry divisional side. So, um, yeah, they've, they, they'll be, they'll be, they'll be dangerous, always are. We've had great battles with them down the years, actually. So, um, uh, I, when I started off against them, it was Morris Fitz. I was <laughs> Um, uh, I know, um, the, the, the crew I would have played with are uh, mostly moved on, but they've got a good, young, exciting team. So yeah, it's, it's it's another good one to be looking forward to next week. When you're when you're 38 and you're looking around, and you're saying most of the crews move, have moved on, is there many of them, many of the lads that you would have played with back in 04, 05, 06, 07, 08 still playing? <laughs> uh, no, I'm the, I'm the only one that's there <laughs> from from that crew. But uh, uh, slagging uh, Armin Heinrich, one of the one of the boys we've been with us and um, that when I was on the, the county panel in, in or when I was on the panel for the county final in 2001 he wasn't born yet and then he informed me it was like it was 2003 he was born oh, <laughs> I said I was nearly on the Kerry squad at that stage so um, yeah. but he's he's been he's 17 year old he's in sixth year in the school I passed him on the way to work in, in his school uniform which is another kind of a uh, a kind of moment where you're like, oh Jesus Christ, am I still going? And fellas, you're playing with going still in sixth year, but he's been um, he's been unbelievable for us. Came in, got man the match 
uh, in his club championship debut, and uh, we lost Brendan Sullivan with a hamstring uh, in the in the in the final against uh, Ken Mayer two weeks ago, mm. and Armin slotted straight in and, and, and played there, and you know he's 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 a very uh, bright future ahead of him. So yeah, I know it's it's young and old combined, but I am bringing up the the age bracket a lot, but I don't want to make too much of a noise of that because. You know, I see this. I see Kieran McManus is forty six playing in the B final there at the weekend. So I'm midfield. I'm young compared, I'm young compared to the three goals. You have another three, four years left in you at least. Stop, that, you, yeah. At least. I want to we're, say we're, we're trying to convince Paddy to keep playing. Like Paddy's thirty three and he's been golfing all summer. Like I'm long gone. I've nothing left. I've nothing left to give. Come on, Paddy. The mind right is all back. The mind is sore back, Caper. You're all right. A couple of injections will be right as right. <laughs> So in around 2003, Kieran, you were uh, have you informed that young fella that you were uh, auditioning for the underdogs at that stage? Yeah, yeah, I know it was. It, it seems like a long time ago, but uh, there was there was there was great crack in it. Um, it. It was great fun. There was there was great kind of bond in the group. Me and Pierce O'Neill came in late, and mm. they picked up a few injuries in the middle of the field, and we kind of came in late to that. But it was it was good. Like we played against Daffy, we played against Meath. Uh, they were good eye openers for me to get out against those teams in kind of challenging conditions. It was around this time of year we, we, we were training, so it was all kind of which which is always a good education for a fella to get. So it was it was very it was a very enjoyable experience, and you know the fact that we went out there and beat Kerry with that group, mm. um, even though Kerry. The boys that say to this day they didn't take it overly seriously, but you know at the same time they wouldn't want to lose to so. Mm. Uh, it went to extra time, so I always liked the boys that they were trying to the very end. The fact that we went into added uh, yeah. two additional periods of extra time, but it was a good win. But the reward for that was that you played Kerry in Kerry. Was 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 that a big attraction to you at the time? Was it were you, were you thinking, right? Were you on the radar at that stage, or were you yeah. using this as a platform to to go and push on? No, that it's a good question. I, I I was on the radar. I was in with the squad that year um, for the semi-final and the quarter final and then got dropped Seamus Mining came back with a with a from an ankle injury for the 04 final and I was dropped off the squad for that 04 final um the the week before um and uh so like it it was a chance for me to kind of this was this was three months after that you know that all our final was in September this was in yeah. December so I was a bit pissed off about being dropped um for the final I felt I was good enough to be on the squad. Um, I wasn't pissed off that it was shame as mine. I felt I was, you know, competitive with other guys on the squad, not shame, obviously. So, uh, you know, it was a bit of a, a, you know, a kick in the nuts. And, um, you know, that that game was really, was about me trying to showcase to, 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 the, to the management. Obviously, you do that by helping your team when you don't do that by going out. And I always tell this to young players when they're coming into a team, you know, we don't need you to go and kick six or seven points and try and show us how good you are. You just need to come in, fit in, do the role, ease into the game. And then once your confidence is gone, chip on your few scores. And and that's kind of what I did in that game. I got two points. I played well in the middle of the field uh, and, and obviously got the win against Kerry. So I couldn't put myself in the, in the shop window anymore for the following year. You started, and, you, started uh, a, you started a scrap with Quirk as well, which was, uh, which was tasty. Yeah, Quirk is... I played with him in basketball. He stuck up for me in the basketball court, so I have to be careful with this. But I fought with him on, on, on club games as well. But Quirk, Quirk is Quirk is easy to get in a fight with, but you kind of want him on your side at the same time. <laughs> he was a bouncer. He was a bouncer for years. You don't mess with bouncers. No, he was a big man. I was just thinking that. Jesus Christ. So bring us into Not Five then, Kieran. Right. So Not Five comes along. You're you're back in the Kerry squad, aren't you? And do you like what level of involvement do you have in 2005 in terms of playing? Yeah, I, I'm kind of, I suppose, I started, uh, came on the league game against Daffley, uh, started the league game against Dublin in Austin Stacks Park, where it was going great. Um, probably got a bit too big for my boots instead of talking a bit of trash with Kieran Whelan. Then he put me on my arse from the draw in the second half and went down and stuck it in the top corner. So that quieted me fairly quietly. <laughs> uh, and then Jack whipped me about 15 minutes after that. So, you know, I don't know about you boys, but you, you for me, that first start in the league, you know, the intensity, it's it's kind of like when you step up the county championship with your club. I think the next step is the National League. And then that chap- that first championship game too, you just feel like, Jesus, how am I ever going to cope with this for 70 minutes yeah. for, for, for as long as, 
as you're going to do it. But you, the body and the mind adapts to how to pace yourself through a game. And, you know, I, I came on in the Munster final in fairness. And that's when I was, that's the first time I felt, okay, you can actually do this, Kieran. Um, I would be, I would have been very unsure of myself, confidence wise, up until that Munster final in 05. We're blowing Parky Cueve. We're playing against that great Cork team. The sun is shining. Um, and the game is the game is right in the mixer, and and Jack turns and throws me in at midfield with about with about fifteen or sixteen minutes to go, and that's when you get that level of trust from in the county manager that he's going to put you in when the game is in the melting pot. That's when you kind of know, okay, they trust me. I'm on the right track. I have to improve in these areas, but at least they think enough of me to put me into the game, and that's where I probably went training harder than I ever did because of the confidence I had going into trying to go into 2006 and, and nailed on a starting spot. It's a massive thing, isn't it, Kieran? that we were talking about it on, on different pods throughout the year and particularly in the National League when young guys are getting their opportunity and stuff. It takes time for, for players, no matter what talent you have, there is a learning curve. Like the best players that the kind of freak shows nearly in a way can come in and hit the ground running straight away. It's gas you say that. I'll always remember my, my debut with Dublin. We played Ross Common in Parnell Park. This is before we moved all our games to Croker. <laughs> oh, yeah. That was before this, this, is, this is a long time ago. I mean, we played Ross Common. Pillar Cafferty was the coach. And we won the game by, honest to God, about 20 points. Uh, really, it was an easy game for, for us at the time. I think Paul Early was actually in charge. They just changed coaches. But I remember that evening. I was only 19 years of age. And I, I couldn't walk for about two days after this. As a, as a young kid, and this was an, an easy National League victory for us, and exactly what you were saying there, I was just thinking, Jesus Christ, this is like nothing I've I played before, and, and the training sessions you go through, and big games with Sigerson Cup and with the club and it, with underage teams, nothing really prepares you for it, going into that, to that first stage, and it takes time, those couple of games, and exactly what you're saying, with Jacko throwing you in in that Munster final, it, there, there are moments like that in every player's career where it's kind of I've arrived now and, and once that happens you're, you're, I love the way you're saying you can get too big for your boots in one, one instance or that can be the carrot that's like I want more of this it becomes yeah. nearly like a drug I, I want to work even harder and we did a lot of it with Jim Gavin would have had this style with Dublin and bringing in young guys onto the squad and maybe giving them a, Conal Callahan's an example Brian Howard give them a little taster in a league game but we're still holding them back and I'm sure you're trying to do that, but you're bringing our ma, yourself and Kieran, pushing on to the next level, consolidating Division One and trying to compete to, to win Ulster titles. Is that something you're really conscious of as well with your young players coming through? Yeah, I think I think it is. Um, you know, it's it's probably an advantage um, that I would see that I have in the locker is that I've I've been every role. You know, as you said, there's the freaks that come in and they're. You know, they're just brilliant from the get-go and they're special, special players and special for a reason. And their kind of path is laid all the way till 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 they, you know, either through injury or they want to go themselves, retire, but they've kind of got that natural path. I think, you know, with me, I was the sub, I was the guy coming on, I was the guy that everyone was talking about, I was the guy that was being dropped, I was the guy that couldn't make squads, I was the guy that got back on squads, got back on teams, all that kind of stuff. So I really kind of preached that to the to the younger players. I'm involved with um, that, you know, it's a bumpy road and that, you know, you have to be able to, to deal with the disappointments in the right way. You know, um, we all know the club guys who were way better than everybody else, but just couldn't deal with that first disappointment. They couldn't take it. And they throw the ties out of the pram and they never really get, get they never really get back on board. And um, so, yeah, always telling them that it's a journey. Like I was 23 when I, when I first, kind of start a starting games for Kerry, you know, so these kids that come out at 19 and 20 now, you know, I'm telling them, look, lads, it was three years before I get on with a Kerry team, I played for 15 years, so, you know, don't, it's not all about a rush, and it's about, you know, just being ready to take advantage of the chances you get, and the chances, especially county level, you might get, you know, you'll get one or two chances, uh, and you have to show the management something, whether it's, whether it's raw ability, whether it's pure doggedness, um, whether you're willing to fight your back to win a possession, win a game, win a ball, you know, there's all there's the little nuances in the game. Do you make those around you better players? Do you try and make those around you better players? Are you conscious of that when you're playing, or is it me, me, me? 
Um, all them types of things is, is, is facets of the game that, that intrigue me a lot and to try and get the best because, you know, you both know it, um, you know, if you're going to be a team that's going to be competing and trying to, trying to be there every year, well, you need 35 guys going hard. You can't have 20 guys going hard and then the other 10 feeling sorry for themselves because they didn't get a game last week. You know, it's, 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 it's really about playing into that. And, you know, your off-season is where, you know, you try and fix that gap. If, if, you, if you're number 24, you know, you get on board for the year, you push your guys around, you try and get on the squad, you try and get on the team. But if you don't, you, you suck it up and you, you, you look at, okay, when the season finishes, I've got four months here. What, where do I go? What do I do? Is it extra kicking? Is it strength work? Is it speed work? Is it mental prep? Whatever it is, how can I improve those facets of my game to come back the year after a better player? And I think the players of, of today's generation have such an advantage with all that. You know, our weights was me looking over at Dara Shea and he harsing 60 kgs up for about 10 months. And I said, well, like, if he's going to just tip away at 60 kgs for 10 months, so can I. Whereas if I looked over at him and he was going up through the weights and getting to 100 and 120, I'd be freaking out. So I think the way it is now, everything is tailored to the individual. They've got the sports side guy if they want to use him or a woman if they want to use, use her to, to improve them as a player, whoever the sports psych is. They've got the, the weight strength and conditioning coach. They've got the dietitian. They've got the stuff there. So there's very little excuses now for guys not, not to push on and make it if their career. So I think the want, do you want it bad enough and do you care bad enough are the two big factors with, with young guys breaking through on the teams. It's, it's a bit, on, on that, Karen, as well, I to say this was I was kind of coming to the end and I know Andy's now on the coaching side of things, you're talking to younger players coming in for, for us into the Dublin squad, and you're right that there, there's there's all it's gotten so professional in a way. Like you have the numerous coaches there, every aspect of your game can be improved. I would always say, and it's difficult for young guys coming in, particularly into successful teams like us or your Kerry team or Andy, your Mayo team. They're a bit in awe of the players that they've been supporters and they've been watching these teams be successful and. They're coming into the dressing room now and they feel, you know, I felt when I went in, like, like guys like Wheelow and stuff like that and Alan Brogan and stuff were there. You're a bit, should I be here? Nearly imposter syndrome. You're, you're only a young kid. You might be 18, 19, 20 years of age. But what I would say, looking back and saying it to younger guys, if you're in that squad, make the most of it. Don't, and I see guys, they're nearly afraid to go up and ask the strength and conditioning coach for, for extra training or they're nearly afraid to ask one of the selectors what, what should I be doing? They're nearly just trying to take it all in, which is fine in a way, but to speed up your progress, use the coaches. If you're involved yeah. in a county team, you're there for a reason. Whether you're 18 years of age or you're 28, ask the coaches, if I'm not playing, what do I need to do to get better? And exactly like you're saying, these couple of months, October, November, December, okay, have a bit of crack with the lads, but... There's work to be done. If, if you want to take those next steps and be serious, you, you need to make the most of the spare time you have. And I'd always push that with younger players. If you're on that squad, annoy the shit out of the coaches. Get on, ask them everything you can to get better. And, and annoy the shit out of the top players. Like you have yeah. to be, you know, you have to go. Like I think there's a lot of, I think there's a lot of, I want to, I want to be cool. You know, yeah, you know, I'd love, I'd love to get rid of cool and just come in and just be a prick around the place when you're when the game is on and like be the guy that there's kind of going, Jesus Christ, he's a nine, isn't he? Because if he's a nine, he's probably the guy you want in your team. If he's getting in your face, he's probably the guy you want in your team. If he's backing that up without training everybody and asking for extra stuff, and you know, as as a coach and as a manager, and Andy will know if he hears, if Andy hears that six of these young Leitrim guys have been onto the strength and conditioning guy and onto the dietitian. Sure, you're kind of going, okay, these fellas are dialed in, these guys want it. Yeah. You know, if, if you've got all those, and, and, and it was so much harder for us when we started out uh, back in those days because it just wasn't, that dim avenues weren't there. And if you weren't, if you were struggling with your, the mental side of your game, that was starting to come in, but like it was still over that side of, 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 of the space, yes, whereas now it's, it's front and centre and, yeah. you know, you have to be happy in yourself, you have to know what you're about and you have to go and ask the coaches if you're not getting game time, you have to be mad enough to say, you know, what do I need to improve on? Like, it should be the first question every young player asks the week after their team lose a championship game. Okay, 
I was on the squad all year. What do you want? What do you see with me? What, what do I need to get better at? And then it's almost a case of coming back and you want to, you want to look over to them and just give them the eyes two weeks into the new training and kind of go, well, there you go. That's, that's what you wanted. And whether it's leaving a few fellas in the ground, whether it's scoring, whether it's defending really tight, whatever it may be, but it's, it's, it's a huge facet of the game that, that these young players must really use to their advantage. And, um, you know, there is no real off season now. Like, you, you know, there's no, there is the few pints and there is the odd weekend here, but it isn't like it used to be. It isn't like, oh, my, my footballing is now finished. I rejoined yeah. it in January, which is what used to happen. Let's call a spade a spade. It was like, oh, I need a break. I'm tired and it's been a tough year. But these guys now are training right through the off season. They're in phenomenal shape, these players. These modern day GA players are, are are something else with with, with 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 what they're putting into the game now. So the credit goes to them. And if you are one of those guys and you want to make the breakthrough, you know, go go the extra go the extra mile and, and, and don't be wondering afterwards why it didn't happen to you. Andy, you wanted in there, didn't you? No, I was just I was gonna go back um to that moment in North Six when Kieran is 23 years of age and you don't play the Munster final either game, I don't think, against Cork. And then all of a sudden, I got sent off the first day. Is that what happened? Right. Okay. I was wondering. I was wondering what that was happening. But the, yeah, the <laughs> player, character for you. Yeah. The, the player. The, <laughs> I would be quite you. Uh, Twice in my career. Yeah, Three it, times actually. They they they, they played the play at full forward the week after, and uh, poor Longford uh, get in fifteen minutes. You get two assists to Brosnan and a, a score before the assist to uh, for Gucci's goal. And the game is over and all of a sudden, for me, I remember watching that game, same age as you, watching the game and going, whoa, okay, there's a new, there's a new dimension here. Uh, Darren O'Sullivan is thrown in right to left, 50 yards, you're just winning them, poor old Barry Giller and Brady, these boys are struggling. Like that must have been just the most amazing moment. Oh, I, I, is it up there as the one of the best moments of your career? I know it's not all Ireland final but it's just you were right that day. To me, you were right that day. You know. Yeah, yeah. No, it's def- Look, it's definitely up there because I remember having the argument with Jack before. I'm kind of going, Jack, if this shit doesn't work, you better put me back out in field and don't be whipping, <laughs> don't whip the big donkey out of full fire. <laughs> so uh, it was as nervous as I ever was before the game. Um, Doctor Mike Finnerty, to his credit, gave me uh, something to fix my stomach, which he told me about four years later was half a paracetamol um, because I thought I'd eat funny food beforehand because I don't really. I get the good nervous, but I don't get the nervous where I'm feeling sick, but I was that day. Because, you know, I was um, a bit of a mullocker around the middle of the field. I was a good, good enough passer, but, you know, I never fancied myself as, as um, to wear the Kerry number 14, which, you know, had been on fellas like Canada and Morris Fitz and, and, and these guys, Johnny Crowley, who was a big, strong man, but he was an unbelievable footballer as well. So, uh, uh, it was actually the week afterwards when, when I backed it up in the Armagh performance, mm. which is probably where I, I was most happy with it because I was real I was a real unknown versus Longford. They wouldn't have even known me. Uh, and I had Darren and Sean Sullivan, two of the best passers on the outside of the boot, putting in rockets to me. And I had a half-forward line that were probably brainwashed in that two weeks by Jack O'Connor to say that the ball is going in and he crash off it. And that's the only way that that high ball game works. And I've seen loads of teams try it. You know, it, 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 it only really works if there's, if there's kind of buy-in from, from, from the whole team because the year after everyone was trying it, but there was no crash ball off the half hour line. So the ball has been broken up by teams. So it's, I, it's, I, I, I'll come in there as well. They, there wasn't the quality of kickers that G had too. You had fellas that could literally put the ball 50 yards onto a, onto a sixpence. Like, yeah. either, like the, the, the Francie Bellew one, even the ones against Longford, they were on... Like they, there's a moment four four points all year. You're out in front of Derek Kavanagh. You win the ball. You lay it off. You go five four up. I think Sean O'Sullivan gets the point out. And literally Cork just fall apart because they, they were trying to stop this moment where you were getting the ball. And then all mm-hmm. of a sudden you get it. You put and you never go behind again. That's all Ireland semi final. So yeah. the, what I'm trying to say is you the quality of kicker that could we had to to we, to a pocket for you. Oh, listen, 100 percent, man. You know, I I was well aware of that. I'm still aware of it. You know, if I was trying full forward in a lot of other counties, it would have it would have <laughs> it would have it would have crumbled down around me into smithereens. Um, uh, because you'd be in there, the ball coming in wouldn't be great. You're not winning it, and then you know the groans start coming, and you know it's it's kind of a case of look, get t- take this guy out of there and, and put in um um uh, Kerry. 
obviously would have had an abundance of, of talented forwards. Um, you know, Declan Sullivan wasn't starting that day, you know, in, in, in the prime of his career, uh, which was, you know, which, he, started, which, he, started, he started in the final. <laughs> he started in the final. In fairness, in fa- and, that's, and, that's, and that sums up Declan. Declan was a female from a young age, you know, took, took, took a dropping, uh, took a dropping the right way. You go away, you grit your teeth, you take it in the chin, you go away, you work hard, and then you come back and you have to prove it every single night in training until you force the management's hand into, even though the team are winning, we can't not start this guy. He's going too well. And by the time the All-Ireland final had come around, that was Declan Sullivan. He was just going too good in training, too powerful, too good on the ball, scoring too much, working like a dog, tackling, turning over the ball. And you, yeah, you know, he came good for that final. But like, he, I'm very aware of the fact that if I wasn't um, a Kerry man and if I was some other type of a man, that that whole full forward experience mightn't work so good. But, but I think there's two good lessons in there, Kieran. right? You were open to the possibility, right? I'm a midfielder here. You were always a midfielder. And then all of a sudden, Jack goes, we're putting you in full forward. The, the next thing was Jack was brave enough to do that. And the third thing was that you turned around to him and go, Jack, if this is not fucking working here, you better take me out because <laughs> you, you were saying, you know, like you're not just, I'm not going to be a sacrificial lamb just to the team either. So I think there was a lot of bravery, a good bit of coaching in it. He really committed to it. And geez, like you, like you made the career out of it from, from doing yeah. that job for the next 10 and, and it was good man management from Jack Andy because when I went back at him with the don't take me off, he was like, don't worry, don't worry, you, you, you know, you're, you're going well all year midfield. So he kind of subconsciously, and this is where Jack, you know, is very strong, subconsciously kind of came to the point of view where he's kind of almost telling me, look, Eric, we're just going to try this point. If it doesn't work, I'll move you back out to the middle field and I'll, I'll be good in the world again. So I wasn't going in there with the kind of, you know, the expectation and the pressure would probably put on myself. I, yeah. I had the number 14 carry jersey on my back. And to me, there's, you know, um, I just, at that stage of the game, I didn't see myself, not worthy of it, but didn't see myself there. Um, and I think the Longford game, the Armagh game, having to back it up against the Cork in the semi-final and obviously going in against yourselves in the final, there was like, the pressure was mounting all the way along. And as long as I kept going up the steps, and getting over the, the pressure of all them, I, I felt once I could handle that, then I was kind of I was fairly good to handle anything else really that was going to be thrown at me for the rest of my days. I'd say. Yeah, I outside, think it, sorry, Paddy. What? From the out, outside looking in, I, I I don't remember the Longford game, but I remember the Armagh game. Watching it, I was I was on a young lad, and Kerry had obviously struggled against the Northern teams the previous couple of years, and and that was a brilliant Armagh team. They, they only won one All Ireland in the end, and I felt looking in. That was the making of that Kerry team. Mm. It was probably the end of Armagh's run. That they, if they didn't win it that year, they weren't going to win a second All Ireland. But also, it was your arrival. And and like I say, you see teams try this maybe one year, and it, it can be a flash in the pan. That I feel that launched you for the next seven or eight years. Mm. Like, is, is do you see it that way as well? Like, what was the the atmosphere? Not just for you going into that Armagh game, but for Jack Owen. And for the Kerry group that you'd lost to Tyrone the year before, you hadn't beaten a Tyrone or Armagh and, and you, you took them out that day and really kind of finished them off. What, what was the atmosphere around? Did you guys feel that that was a massive win for that group to go forward? 100%, uh, Paddy. That was like, you know, people forget how good that Armagh team really were. They came up against the best Tyrone team of all time Um and they were coming up against a pretty good Kerry team as well that day. And, you know, they were just so close to probably having three or four All-Irelands. Um, and, you know, when we were going at them that day, it was a massive game for us because at halftime, we weren't in a great spot. I wasn't in a great spot. Um, it wasn't really working. And, you know, and I, I, you know, again, you have to give Jack credit here. It, very easily, management-wise, very easy to go. It's one six to one three, lads. We're not in a good place. The ball's gone into Donaghy. He's only won two out of eight balls that were gone in in that, in that first half. Um, and then Jack flips it on his head and says, You're I won the two balls before half time, and I won another free out in the sideline, winning that. Darrow Shea punted the ball into me against McGinney and Francie Bellew, and I won it over in the Hogan stand. 
And I went down the sideline, swinging elbows and trying to bounce <laughs> it and soloing and another few elbows. And somehow I got a free out of it. And uh, yeah, we Gooch tapped over the free and going into half time, Jack builds me up then like, you know, we're, we're, we're going fine. Keep putting it into him. We're getting on top now. And, and then, you know, we go from three points down to being a point up after, or being two points up. We got two points and then the goal straight off the bat. So we turned a, a three-point deficit into a two-point lead. And then we looked really comfortable for a long while. And then our man, to the credit, come back. Um, Paul gets, gets, gets a red card. Um, the, the momentum was already flipped in, in our man's favour at that stage. Uh, and Darren Sullivan, thankfully for us, in, intercepted a big pass and goes and sticks it in, and we and, and we pull away. The scoreline probably flattered us a bit, mm. but it was it was a massive game. Darren Shea was classes in the middle of the field, and it probably it was it was like it was like Dublin in '09 in in that quarter final. It probably catapulted us on to kind of yeah. go. We, we, we're 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 going to be hard to beat from here on home. Yeah, Jack was very good at that, Kieran. Yeah. The man management yeah. style, knowing what to say at the, at the right time. Yeah, yeah. He also, you know, told me not to go to the Champions League final because he dropped me in, you know. So he was he was good to stick by his word. Uh, <laughs> but you know, he was he, he was he was good. He was good. Um, was that Moscow? No, it was uh, Munich. Munich. Oh, Munich, Munich, yeah. The right call, here. You know it was the right call. I know it was. I knew it was the right call at the time. Like, I, I just tried my best to extend to him. He couldn't see it that way. But look. It's in a lifetime. Uh, yeah, yeah. Those were the days. <laughs> Jack, I'm going to the Champions League. <laughs> I love if one of the Armagh lads tried it this year. He'd be gone. <laughs> well, it'll oh, be right. a tougher conversation with Kieran Roden at the night. Yeah, yeah, but I find that fascinating. You go in and you're, you're battling against Kirby, Scanlon, Quirk, and these guys. And you're looking for that number eight, number nine jersey. And all of a sudden, you turn into one of the most iconic full forwards of our, of our generation so mm-hmm. it's it there's a good lesson in that too for anyone that's listening you just don't know where this is going to end yeah that, just, that's what i said earlier on it's a bumpy road Andy. it's a bumpy road like it's it's the special players that have the plane sailing that's that's really i suppose what we're getting at here every young player that isn't the top of the list there's a pack there for you too which you're just going to have to find your way and you're going to have to be mm-hmm. mentally tough to back yourself and nobody else backs you and that you're gonna you're gonna see it out and you're gonna improve. And look, I go back to do you want it bad enough and do you care for those you're playing for, whether it be club, school, college, county, whatever it is, are you out there? Are you caring enough to work your arse off for the team? I think once you're at that, you know, once once your ability is is, is at a level, if if you're not going to be beaten in the dog fight and you've got a bit of ability behind you, you're gonna be fine. All you boys are in work at the minute, so I'm going to fast forward here uh, a couple of years so that we can get through it. Um, the rocky road doesn't slow down even when you get to 2014. Mayo's always in this road too, aren't they? Yeah. <laughs> a big speed bump on that road. Now. <laughs> it's the only road to take, like. Who wants to go to the motorway? you got to go. you got to go through all the old towns and, and take the long way. 2014, Kieran, like, um, Paddy, we've spoken about Donegal beating Dublin and that semi-final and how important it was a lot on this podcast. But the previous six days before that game, Mayo and Kerry served up two of the most colourful, epic semi-finals that we've ever seen. Kieran, when you think back on Limerick, where does that night rank for yeah, you? Yeah, sorry, no, Tommy, I have to come in there. He, he has to go 66 minutes, Crow Park. Okay, go Crow? straight there. Yeah, have straight to go there. there. Yeah, when you, when you come on. But, yeah. Where was the season yeah, up to that? Like, were you, were, you, were you struggling for minutes up to that point? Oh, I, I, I hadn't really played in about a year and a half for Kerry. Like, I had, um, I came on as a sub against the boys, and, against Paddy and the boys in 2013, but I was carrying that osteopubis injury at that stage. And I wasn't really motoring. I got dropped for the Munster final that year in 13. Um, made it back on, started the, qu- started the quarter final, and then got dropped again for the Dublin game. Um, and then 14 was just a year where, you know, I was questioning really... Um, because I, I I wasn't fully in, in, on top of the injury, so I was I was kind of starting to doubt whether it was just going to be time to hang him up, really. And I, I had a, I had much more of a journey done at that stage than I ever thought I would have. So I thought I was winning. If I was in if I was in the casino, I'd be I'd be cashing out and I'd be happy with the chips I was taking home. I put it that way. Um, and yeah, <clears throat> you know, I didn't play against Galway. 
Um, and this is where, you know, I went to aim and the following Tuesday night. I didn't, you know, I was a bit, bit uh, down in the dumps, but trying not to show it in front of the boys, but, uh, but they would have known by me because of how bubbly I would normally be and how, how much trying to have the crack I'd be with boys that I would have, I was a bit quieter. So they would have known, but I wasn't, at the same time, I wasn't sulking around the place because nothing worse than the team wins kind of fellas sulking around the place. So I was conscious not to sulk. But I was, I was, I was in my own headspace because I was starting to go, Jesus Christ, I've been um, an unused sub here now, um, not brought on against Galway in, in a game. Yeah, we thought, you know, you were, we, we thought you were gone. Yeah. As an yeah, opposition. Yeah. 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 And, and you, and that, of course, and, and, and let's, let's, Call a spade a spade, Andy. I was gone, really. Um, uh, and 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 uh, again, the, the situation of the game uh, in in that semi final, <clears throat> we got in at halftime. I don't know what Eby said at halftime, but definitely different to what we said at halftime because we were like, "Keep it going. We're a man up. This is what we're going to do with the man. It's all going to be fine. Mind the ball. Do all these things." But what we, you know, what you forget about then is. I suppose the extra intensity that comes with fellas that feel like they've been hard done by and feel like they've nothing to lose, throw caution to the wind, and all of a sudden we were we were we were beaten like you know we, we were we were we were really. I you got that Hawkeye point. Um, I slipped on in the middle of that whole Hawkeye thing, so like I would I would have I, people wouldn't have even know I was on the pitch. I'd say for the first few minutes because um, I went in when you when your point was voted. Uh, Taw by Hawkeye, which was uh, not nice to see when you were already up the shits uh, to be four down and now to go five down. So look, but again, the necessity of the game. What does it demand at that stage? It's it's six minutes to go and it's and it's kind of like we're five points down. Let's start launching ball in. But again, it works a bit because. But you, came out, you came out and caught one in the middle of the field too. I, 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 I went down the middle of the field. That I was a big, that was a big, yeah, that was a big. Yeah, I went on, down, I, I won that kick out to try and, yeah. I guess, settle things. You, you but, stemmed the tide, yeah. Yeah, but still, you were still, you know, I remember I won the kick out, we went down, we didn't score. Then he held the ball for a while, then he didn't score either. And when that next ball went wide, Paco, our runner, came running on, sending me down to full forward. And, and, you know, we've all been there. I don't know, Andy, you've probably been there in club games, but, like, they're just... It's desperation. They're flaking ball in top of you. It's, it's a desperate place to be. Uh, the year before against Dublin, I was in the exact same scenario. We were in a tight game. Dublin got a goal late on. We were down three points, and then from the 78th minute to the 74th minute, we lashed ball in on top of me, and the Dubs had sweepers everywhere, and they were knocking it away from me, and they were carrying it up the pitch, and it's a lonely place to be. And fast forward a year later, I'm back here again. But it's just, you know, you, you have to take a bit of luck when you get with it. You have mm. to try and go for the ball as best you can. You have to hope this fella's coming off you. Uh, and, and I guess it's the difference between playing a big man at the edge of the square midway through the first half versus playing him with five minutes to go and you're down five points. No, everybody's gambling. Everybody's thinking, we got to get in off it. We got to gamble off it. Um, and you know first, that's all that happened. We gambled and the quality. The quality. First the but the first, the first ball though, the first big ball you win, and it's making a three point game. Uh, Ganey plays it, and it's about thirty yards out. You win it ahead of Donny Vaughan and Kevin McLaughlin, right? So that's a free, yeah. and it's put over the bar. Next kicker goes out. Ball finds its way to David Moore, and he's quality on the sideline. Quality of this foot pass this, is insane. Go back and watch it, like it, like yeah. Kieran, like this ball is in the air. I'd say for about five seconds. <laughs> yeah. Does that does that feel like an eternity, or do you know this this is the, this is on the money? You know what's coming to you. You're using the hip. You're holding it off. You know it's gonna land right, like right in the black spot, five yeah. six yards from goals. What's going through your head as that ball's coming from more? Um, or is there one, one, is, one, one you see him in the sideline, and you're just hoping he wriggles out of it and gets a ball. In. That's the first thing you're hoping. So you're trying to get into position. You have to get into position before the ball is kicked. It's too late if you're not in the position. When the ball is kicked, so I was moved, obviously on the move when I saw Dave had it because I know he has that in the locker. When he was so close to the sideline, he's a bit worried, but his shimmy was brilliant. His ball was brilliant. Uh, and he'll tell you, Caffrick, he was struggling at that stage. Yeah, I don't know if his calf yeah. cramping or something was cramping, but he wasn't. Uh, when I when he when he was on my hip at the start, but I could tell he had no power. Um, uh, and then when, when mid-flight of the ball, I saw James on the move. And then I focused back in the ball. So I knew if I caught it that he'd be there. 
Um, and then it was just about an accurate hand pass. And then he put he James put it into the eye of the needle, and he was unreal. He was player of the year that year. He was amazing. Yeah, yeah. So he was the right fella too to get it to. But Larry's point was a huge score. Huge score, yeah. And I slag Larry to this day because he fucking he took a ball off me. There was a ball went in. <laughs> I was after catching two or three at this stage, and this is my ball all written all over. Like, and I called it because the confidence is up. No, I'm I'm calling the ball before it nearly leaves your man's boot out the pitch. <laughs> and I'm running after it and then Larry jumps up and grabs it and takes it out of my hand and then gets turned over and that was the one where Richie Feeney went up and I think it was Richie Feeney was it Andy that missed one that would have made it two again no, no I'm not sure I'm not sure who missed that one but uh, yeah someone yeah. I, I don't know who it was I think it was the corner back in a way missed it uh, and then we got we got the chance to come down and obviously uh, Larry kicks that point to get us the draw and then James has one to win it Mm. That hits the post, so it was a mad game. No wonder, no wonder the replay was was so unbelievable because of what happened at the end of that game, and I suppose the atmosphere that would have been in the place. It was a strange atmosphere that was in the place because both teams knew they could have lost it. Both teams knew that they could have won it, mm. and it was probably the one time where you kind of like going draws probably fair enough here after James is the post later on. And you were the so loser. Yeah. You were the pantomime villain, like he's behind you, kind of thing, and he, he comes in from nowhere. I was always, the, I was always <laughs> I the pantomime villain. I know you were. <laughs> you embraced it, though. You loved yeah, it. You loved it. But the, the thing I would say, I didn't that, love it. I just had to do it. <laughs> yeah, on, on, a, on a coaching perspective, we often say, everyone says, "Oh, you should study video analysis to know the opposition." What Kieran is just after saying there: know your own players. He knows it's David Moore on the line. You know, he knows it's David Moore. He knows he's probably the only person in the Middle East at that stage with the ability to kick that ball. Maybe Brian Sheen, I think, is just on. Yeah. So maybe Brian Sheen could do it. But they're the two. So you know you're moving, you're getting into position, he could do it. it you, you know your player is going to loop. You know James is on his game. You're getting So it, everyone is so mad to know the opposition. What Kieran is actually telling people there is he knew his own players inside out. He knew Dave could hit the right, outside the right boost. He knew Dunham was coming the loop. It's beautiful. And you, and, you, and you know that, Andy, because I'm asking Dave to kick 10 of them before we start training. Yep. So, like, getting out before training, like, there should be, there's, there's, there needs to be more of that before training rather than fellas kicking points or kicking in trees, just simple passes, because they're not game-specific passes. They're just passing. You know, I think, I think if you want to work on your passing with someone, you bring someone to a pitch and, and you work on, on, you know, 20 inside of the boots, 20 outside of the boots, mark your score, keep your score, know where you're, know where you're letting yourself down so you know coming down the line, if you're four out of 20 and the outside of the right boot, but then the outside of the right boot isn't coming out of the locker in, in a championship game yet. It, ha- it needs time to work on, but that stuff from forwards, corner forwards, half forwards, working on diagonal ball, fellas coming from the other side, there's loads that can be done before um, before training starts at all, before we get into the, the session, because you know the sessions, now. It's, it, you know, if you want to work in your game, you, you you need to be working on a lot of those skills probably away from the group session because the group session is so scenario based trying to get through all your stuff um, that you mightn't get all the chances in the world to practice certain skill sets it's, it's so clear on that I, I just remember flashbacks we were training in the summer in DCU and, and Brian Cullen's obviously our strength and conditioning and <laughs> he'd be running trying to drag lads off the pitch before training or after training because it's just specifically half backs James McCarthy and Jack McCaffrey doing certain moves, working with forwards and pairs. We Michael Dara in the midf- in midfield, Brian Fenton later on, kick passing into the full forward line. It was just constant, and and Portal Cully and Jim are trying to drag guys off the pitch, trying to manage load and things like that as well. But but so much of that, those plays and those moves, when you see just they look so slick doing that. That's individuals doing it nearly on their own time. Because you're right, when you get into the group training sessions, it's it's more wider, it's tactics-based, it can be physical stuff, it's maybe 15 on 15 or, or, or certain things, whereas those matchups, you know, my buddy in the middle of the field, I know what he's going to do with the ball, or the halfbacks, they're, they're coming through, where am I going to go when they're sprinting straight at the middle of the goal? They're all conversations that players are, are having before training, after training, their nights off when... You know, they're doing their individual stuff as well. It's so much of that stuff. When you see really slick forward play or really set defensive play, a lot of that is conversations between yeah. players themselves. And if you're not doing that, you're not going to get enough out of just the, the one group session or the two group sessions you're doing on a Tuesday and a Thursday. 
you need to be doing the extra bits because that's when it comes in handy. You know, oh, the last two yeah. minutes, the, the game is on the line, the championship is on the line, the best teams can pull it out of the bag and it's not by chance. No, you need to know what the other guy is, is thinking and doing and what he has in the locker and what, what you need to do to make what he has in the locker look as good as possible. So, the following week, six days later, everyone's in Limerick. It's five o'clock on a Saturday evening. The teams are being named before the game. Kieran Donahue's starting full forward. He's wearing number 22, first game he started all season. Andy Moran, you're wearing number 24 starting that week. That, that decision to get you started that week, um, you both have a big impact on the game. Like, it goes to extra time. It looks like Mayo in extra time are actually going to pull away. They go two points clear. Jonathan Lyon has an unbelievable impact in that, that second half of extra time. Like, where, where does this night rank, Kieran, in terms of the big wins of your career, or the, the moments? Or... Um, it, was it was just a mental game. Like. James, it was a bit, yeah, it, it, like it's, it's the best game. It's the best game I was involved in in my, in my inter county career because, as you say, it just. It just I don't know. We were all kind of given out. There was some American football game on in Crow Park. Oh my God, we're down in Limerick. What's going on? But it just goes to prove that these, you know, uh, these fixtures in, in a ground where there isn't a lot of empty seats, it definitely added to the atmosphere. And then you, you know, you know, you you two of the top teams in the country going toe to toe after replay after sussing each other out, and with the atmosphere that that started to engulf the place pretty early on in the game. Um, you know, it was kind of, it, it goes no holds bar kind of stuff then. You know, it, it just goes to, it goes to real kind of, um, real parochial kind of spirit. It, 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 you know, it, it, tactics are still important, but it was general warfare all over the pitch, you know, um, in every position. We didn't, score, you know, we, we didn't score for the last, I think, the last 15 minutes of extra time. I think uh, you just had more in the locker. I think you played a more, not a more conservative game, but a more kicking game. Dave, like your three goals, I think, came from three kicks from David Moore. And Joe, there were yeah. just a few bits that you need more in the reserve at, at the end. We lost. I, I, I think there was a chance, Andy. We were, Peter Crowley did miraculously well to get it. But when he went two points up early on in the extra time, he had a goal chance, and I don't know what happened, but I know Crowley came out with the ball anyway. He was limping, he was cramping at that stage, but there was a block or there was a chance and it was a bad hand pass or something happened, but it was like, for me, at full forward at the other end, I was going, oh my God, this is going into the net. <laughs> this is going into the net. And we know five points in, in injury in, 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 in extra time is always going to be hard to claw back as the team goes defensive, they play on the counter-attack yeah. and they are perfectly suited to absolutely murdering you on counter-attack ball. So um, it was, it was, it was, it was the, I feel that was, there was so much went on the whole game and the extra time and freeze at the end to win it and whatever. But I feel if that goal had gone in from Mayo, we were dead. And the fact that it didn't and Crowley came out with us, you know, and then we had Jonathan Lyon, our, our bench, no, we heroes sure. on the bench that mightn't have played much for, for that season. Um, Pat Kilkenny came on, Mark Griffin came on, uh, yeah, John yeah, Denine yeah. came on and kicked two massive points yeah. so we, we, got, we got major pluses off the bench that maybe Mayo wouldn't have been counting on those guys you know helping probably winning us the game that day really we're, we're into the shot clock here so I'm going to go quick fire with a couple of topics and uh, Andy when, when we let Kieran go we might finish two minutes on, on Mayo Kerry I'll let you have your say when Kieran's off the screen so <laughs> Tommy, I, Tommy I, I agree with nearly everything he says so yeah go on Tommy <laughs> Welch Retired from Intercounty football last week. He obviously starred for Cairns of Rally, and you, you, you probably might come up against each other down the line in the next couple of weeks. Did we ever see the best of Tommy in a, in a oh, Kerry jersey? Or what oh, is yeah, the best of Tommy did. Welch? We did. We did. We saw the best of him in, in, oh, in, in 09. He was, he was phenomenal. 08, he was phenomenal as well. You know, yeah, we got beaten by, by Tyrone, but he's just Tyrone. We're a very good team at, at that stage, and we probably still should have beaten him that day. I always say that, but should have, yeah. would have, could have, and all that. Um, but Tommy was, Tommy in 09 was, you know, he was just, he was, he was hard to beat. He was, he was strong. He was up in front. He was quick. He could kick. He could, I remember trying to tackle him in that quarter final of 2009. <laughs> he, he stepped over me. I literally was hanging out to his ankles at one stage. was like, get me out of the full back line. Yeah, he's a monster. He's a monster. He's a monster. He's a way, way, 
completely different breed to me in shape ways. Like he was just a power host. Like I was never a power host. I was, but he was a power host. Know what I mean? And, um, you know, I just, I, 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 I didn't know that we get the best out of him in the last three years. I think we played him very samey all the time. Um, he's very good out in front, of, out in front into his chest. But, you know, I'd say Tyrone and this year or, or, or whatever teams, you know, even you're, you know, in, 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 in 19, Paddy, you would have been happy enough to see Tommy running out 40 yards yeah. with into his chest, whereas the one over the top would, would maybe cause you a bit more uh, oh, anxiety. But, like, you know, there was frustration for me in certain games looking at Kerry this year. You know, we're up by 12 points against Tipperary in Simple Stadium. He comes on and there's one high ball played in in 14 minutes. You know, at least to kind of have opposition thinking down the line, Jesus, if Tommy Walsh comes on, he could they, they could aerial bombard us here. And there's that fear there and the team has to prepare for that. And then you don't do it and Tommy wins all the ball out in front. Well, then it's a surprise. But if you're just going to play it to him in front and mm. front and front, all the time, you know, and never look too much to get him involved in over his head because there's easy goals to be got if you can get good ball in and 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 guys reacting to it, you know. So I, I don't, you know, we didn't see the best of him in, in the second half of his career career, but I tell you one thing, he was amazing in the dressing room when he came back from Australia. He was just such a good guy to have in the dressing room, and I think would be missed massively in that regard in the Kerry dressing room and. You know, uh, I'd like to wish him well in his retirement. I loved him as a teammate. He's a good friend of mine. He's a great bit of stuff. Great guy. If you were stuck anywhere, you'd call him. He'd come for you. Um, and, you know, he gave it all. Uh, he gave it all in Australia when he was down there. And he was unlucky. He was just starting to come when, when, when he ripped the three hamstring muscles off, off the bone. Um, and, you know, had to wear it all to come back. And what people see on a Sunday is, is, is the tippet of what we do, you know, what people didn't see and people that want to say that Tommy didn't do this in his second part of his career or whatever, but Tommy was at every training session. He was leading the group. He was driving the culture. Uh, he was trying to push the team on. He was doing his job when he came on uh, and did it right to the very end in, in having a go to try and get that equaliser against, against Tyrone. Um, and you know you you got to give Phil as massive credit uh, yeah. to be doing that at 33 years of age. So no, he was a he was a great bit of stuff. But we saw the best of him in 09, Tommy. Paddy and the boys got a few. Yeah, Paddy yeah. And the boys got a few All Irelands there uh, in 11. That if Tommy was there, might might yeah. come across three. <laughs> you never let this go. Okay. <laughs> no, 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 no. No, I didn't right. want to bring up 11. We let you talk about the one you won in 40. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 no. I, I, I prefer talking about the pain. Really. I'm more comfortable talking about the pain. That's a totally I, separate podcast. Uh, Kieran, I, 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 it passed me by that you had missed so much of 09 with that broken bone in your foot. I always thought that you and Tommy had that season together, but it was more so 08 that you really had together. Yeah, yeah. Long it was 08. He was kind of coming on in 07. Um, uh, 08, we, 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 uh, 09, we looked really good in a lot of yeah. league games inside the two of us. And um, yeah, obviously, look, I broke them at a parcel in the league final, got the operation, made it back in eight weeks for the Longford game above there, and then went mm-hmm. for a ball that I probably shouldn't have went for, but tried to fist one into the net and landed and got landed on and broke the bone again. And then came back on to be to be a sub in that final. Yeah. But like you know, there wasn't really much need for me, Tommy. Um, <laughs> Tommy filled the fourteen jersey just fine. <laughs> Maybe I was glad to see him go to Australia. Again. <laughs> <laughs> you're 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 ringing tight, Kennelly. Get him out of here. Bring him with you. Bring I him was, home. Bring I was him ringing home all the you. agents and saying, "Kill this. Yeah. I've got a good guy for you here to sign." You're, you're you're excited for it to be back on the road to Armagh again this year. You're you're up again with Kieran McGinney and Kieran McKeever again. It's a really exciting project. We love watching Armagh on this on this podcast. Yeah, no, no, no. It's it's been look. It's been a, a huge eye opener for me. Um, you know, obviously, Kieran is 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 quality, and um, you know, McKeever is a top level coach as well. So it's a great learning curve for me, and um, perfect. For what I what I wanted on, on my road to management was to get in, involved in a really good team, a team that could be competitive and a team that could win things, um, and a team that had an exciting bunch of players and a dedicated bunch of players, and and the culture that Kieran has created there over the last eight years has been unreal, Tommy. And to come in and see it firsthand, you know, uh, uh, was really good. And you know, it was it was hard. 
on the body for me to, to, to get up to all the sessions. But I felt we had, I had to do that with, with what was going on with the COVID and how long we had with the players. I felt if I wasn't there, I, I wouldn't have any impact. But uh, no, I get on really well with the group. And yeah, um, it was a, it was a two-year term and, and looking, looking forward to getting involved. I felt we were very lucky last year. Um, uh, against Monaghan in, yeah. in that Ulster semi-final and look there's lessons to be learned from it but you know the, the group is continually trying to get better every year and, and that's what we'll be at this year You're saying the, the trip was tough on the body it's a pity there was nothing closer to home Yeah no it was It was. I suppose when the call came I was kind of I, I knew Geezer from, from being involved with him and uh, initially I was kind of like going Jesus, it'd be great to get involved with Kieran. Like you know, I, yeah. you know, if it was if it was in Clare, it'd be great. Uh, <laughs> then, 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 no then, then, it's phenomenal. Then, stuff. then then I started looking at the kind of um, where I am, obviously with the pitches and PST, and where I cover with covering the country. Uh, and I do cover the north of Ireland as well. And I was kind of you know there was there was definite. Uh, there was definite times where I could say, okay, I can I can link in. I do quite a bit in Nori. Um, and Armagh is only half an hour from there. So I was kind of going, okay, can can this be feasible? And uh, can it be doable? And um, thankfully, with, with with being busy with work and being on the road, I was able to kind of work appointments into the days that I was that I was traveling up in the evening. Um, you know, coming home was coming home on a Tuesday night is no fun. Uh, to get back into the office at eight o'clock in the Wednesday morning. Uh, but, but look, it was something that, you know, for my road and in my career, going into management and coaching and all that kind of stuff, you know, it, it, I, I couldn't get a better apprenticeship than, than working under Kieran McGinney and Dennis Hollywood, who's brilliant as well. And and obviously me and McKeever kind of came in at the same time. So yeah. we're both young guys, the same age, trying to learn the ropes. And you tell you, it's not easy. Um it, it, you, you do well when, when it goes well but when it doesn't it, it, it's all your fault so it's not an easy road not an easy journey but what you want to do is be sure about yourself and try and get the best uh, apprenticeship you can so um, yeah looking looking forward to this year again come on the phone's ringing there you, you missed my subtle question there was it Jack ringing did you get a call from Jack over the last couple of weeks <laughs> no no it's only in the next office sorry Tommy okay <laughs> it's exciting times in Kerry it is. It is exciting, and um, look, you know, Jack uh, will, will 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 bring an awful lot to the group, and he's got he's got you know Paddy Telly, who I don't know much about, but from what I heard, is it, a really a really good coach. And look, I've I've played with Corky, and I've been in dressing rooms with him, and I've played against him, and he's he's a really capable guy as well. So yeah, um, you know, a bit of freshness. Kerry, you saw the bounce Kerry got in in nineteen when Peter came in for the first year. Uh, and Kerry players and 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 Kerry people in general will be hoping that they that this new management team give the team a bounce and give them a bit of new energy and um, you know they have you know they're 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 on the pro low looking for players and that's yep. there's always a kind of when the new manager comes in Paddy will tell you this from from the changeover and so will Andy there's always a bit of geez what's this fella think about me and geez I better put in a good <laughs> off season I better put in a good there's, I tell you. There's no fellas taking off the league, you know, Tommy, when the new manager comes in. Like in 100%. all them fellas that take the breaks during the league. It's not the first year the new manager is in. <laughs> you're only taking the breaks first man in, when, right? when you know you're well in with the manager. Yeah. Aaron, you've been savage at your time. Thanks so much for joining us on the football pod of Paddy and Andy. Very best of luck next weekend. Uh, and c- congrats on breaking the club record. Like that must be a massive, massive achievement for you personally as well. We'll, we'll end oh, with that. No, uh, yeah, look, it is, it is, and you know, it's, it's. Look, the, the, the club is a serious tradition, and it's got a serious amount of all Ireland medals going back down through the years. And Gerald Keith was a guy who brought a good few of those to the club, and um, yeah, I, do, yeah, look, it was, it was something that <laughs> this it kind of started going around on Wednesday, and we train on Wednesday night, and I was marking probably Barry Shannon or Dylan Casey who would be who'd be trying to get on the Kerry team this year, and I was. People were like, oh, Kieran, 60 championship games coming on Saturday night. And I was kind of going, Jesus Christ. I have to get through a training session with fellas trying to clip that off me everywhere I go. So uh, it's, it's class, I, though, I, because like it's only like certain counties or certain clubs that will actually have done their own work themselves and have these stats. We don't have enough of that in the GA. 
Yeah, look, that I think I think stats is something that's you know coming into it. I, I think because I watch a lot of American sports now, and they nearly overkill you with random stats that you're kind of like, all right, okay, I don't. That's not really. But look, obviously, championship appearances for the club. Mayo are very good. Mayo do very good stats, and they honor guys when they've played a certain amount of league games, which are just as important as championship games. Yeah. Uh, and 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 they do it very well. And there, there there does need to be a bit more of that, a bit more of of honoring guys. You know. It's hard, like you know, it's it's hard to keep going. There's a few of those Dublin fellas now into kind of 10, 11, 12 years. Obviously, Cluxton was was out in his own, but to give ten or fifteen years to the to the to the to the county is is something else. And to come back and be able to give it to the club and not be injured and be able to get through the amount of games I have, uh, I'd like to have won a few more championships. But um, look, we're into the quarter final anyway, so it's always there's always the next game. Feed up for the week here. Now driving now for the rest of the week. Get ready for this weekend. I'm just after organising meetings in Waterford, so I'm on the road Wednesday. <laughs> oh. Not uh, across well, the road. You'll be all right. That's only across the road as well. It's only across the road. You know that with your role, the amount of guys you've played down in Kerry this year. Not that far away. <laughs> First time I've left the M50. Like. <laughs> You're Donahue. Thank you. Why is it an honour to be on the pod? Keep up the good work. Thanks, Kerry. Cheers, Kerry. Good luck. All right. Be safe. Best of luck with the book, Andy. Thanks, Kerry. You're very welcome back to the football pod with Paddy and Andy. That was Kieran Donahue who was there with us uh, for the last. Jesus, I, I kept for an hour in the middle of work. I shouldn't have done that, but you know he was brilliant with his time. Um, we have one last bit of housekeeping here on the football pod. Uh, Paddy, what did you make it out with with Kieran? What a career! Phenomenal, yeah. And, and, and people kind of forget there's, there's recency bias with guys, and, and he became such a nut. As Andy was saying, one of the most iconic not just forwards, but players of our generation, but talk about his journey starting out. You know, the underdogs, which is, which is gone now, but that, dealing with setbacks, the doubt he had in himself, even those two or three years where he was on the squad and it's probably not happening for him. And like I say, I, I, touched on it. I always feel that that Armagh game in 06 was the new incarnation. Whatever he'd done around the middle of the field, to be in and, in and out of squads and in and out of teams. That performance from him and for Kerry that day, that cemented him as the number 14 for Kerry for, for pretty much the next seven or eight years. Um, and a phenomenal career. Just a great guy. And you, you hear this, you get to know him, I suppose, myself, now that we're finished. Just a, a, a sound fella. And, and to see the work he's still doing, coaching with our man, playing at the weekend, going for, for, for club championships, it's phenomenal to see, you know. I'm sorry, I was trying to get some happy birthday music going there and it's not working for me. Andy Warren, happy birthday tomorrow or today. Tomorrow. It's, it's today. It's, no, tomorrow, it's Tuesday. Tomorrow. It's Tuesday. It's tomorrow, happy birthday. Tomorrow. Yeah. You're joining the 38 Club. In 38. Uh, the man this Not yet, though, baby. I thought I thought Donnie was older than me when I checked up his age. No. Yeah, so we're the same age. So, yeah, 38 tomorrow, lads. 38. So you're, you're still mid 30s for now. I'm saying mid 30s. <laughs> Thank you, buddy. Tomorrow <laughs> it's late 30s and you're in your 20s, buddy, right? Mid thirties, yeah. Andy Moore. Yeah, look yeah. at him; he looks phenomenal. One of my close mates is actually uh, he's forty on Wednesday. Do you know, and it, it, it's that moment within a group where a fella turns forty and you're just like, forty's oh, big. Jesus, yeah. forty's <laughs> a big ask. Yeah, so he's uh, yeah, so that his is a bit more, uh, a bit more of a big deal. A bit, he's stealing your thunder there now. Yeah, I'm happy enough with that. I'm happy enough. Thirty-eight is yeah. yeah, it's not. Well, pair, well, pair of runners will do me. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> in the post, DHL will bring it with you. <laughs> no, 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 listen, happy birthday. And uh, from everyone on the pod and, and all the audience at home, I'm sure they're all going to get in touch and wish you happy birthday. It's, uh, it's a busy couple of weeks up and down to Leitrim, you know, signing books. You should have seen his wrists last week, Paddy. I don't know how the man signed so many books. It's incredible. It was incredible. Are yeah. you in? Are you in trouble? But the no, no, no. Physio, tra- physio table. I was back on the physio table with the <laughs> <laughs> book signing injury. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Maybe our late thirties, Andy. Now, yeah, that. yeah, maybe not. Everything was good. Yeah, busy couple of weeks, Tommy. Um, but yeah, enjoying them, enjoying them, getting getting to know the Leitrim lads. As as Kieran said, there when you get into a new team, you get to know new people, new kind of dynamics within groups and stuff like that. It's it's nice to see. Brilliant. Well, look, happy birthday, Paddy Andrews. Thanks a million for joining us again this week. Great to be here, lads. A Andy. fresh, a fresh Paddy Andrews. A fresh, uh, fresh of the days in the last few weeks. Lads. I'll be travelling just done, thank God. Just trying to get myself to the wedding. And he didn't. Did you? What about Ronaldo? What have we got, Paddy? How long have we got to the wedding, Paddy? We got five weeks. Uh, it was six weeks on Saturday, so countdown is on. And and what's the build up? What's the build up like? What's going on, like? 
I'm leaving that to ourselves. I'm flat out with work. I'm flat out with this Masters. I'm like, I can't believe I signed up to do a Masters myself. Oh, heavy yeah. going. And that's, yeah, that's your kind of, that's your Thursdays kind of looked after pretty much. And the rest. It? Yeah, and the rest. Yeah. Yeah. What yeah. about Ronaldo? Before you go, you have to mention Ronaldo. Ah, oh, phenomenal. Wasn't it? Finish. The only thing, uh, Keno said it, perfect match for Tottenham. Exactly. It's Tottenham, lads. Well, it's it? Tottenham. Yeah. Tottenham, lads. Jesus. But that's, they're back on track, but we'll see you tomorrow night for Champions League. But Ronnie, that, what a man. What a finish. What a finish. Yeah. yeah. Well, look at lads. Uh, we're all busy. I have a flight to catch, so I'll, uh, I'll leave you to it. And hopefully, we have a podcast next. I'm even, we will have a football pod next week. So I hope you really enjoyed this. Listening at home, Kieran Donny was a brilliant guest to have on this week. What a win they had against knocking out East Kerry and what a career he's had in football as well. Andy Moran can't believe that they're both the same age. Paddy Andrews can't believe that he's still playing football and he's not playing this summer. So five years younger, Jesus. <laughs> you have to, you have to make a comeback. Paddy. I know it's a kick in the hole for me that now. I have to say. Yeah. <laughs> right, lads, get back to work. Thanks, me and. Thanks, lads. Take it easy. Happy birthday, Andrew. Bye, bye. Thanks, lads. Take care.